afternoon. So the alumni have gone, so I'm proceeding now to the next uh, segment. Uh, I'll be with the alumni on, uh, on, um, on Sunday. So we'll come back and have another one-hour session on Sunday. Then uh, um, we will break and have the alumni. So there are a few things. Uh, I'm, I'm advised that we are now live. So I will be well-mannered uh, thereafter. So I was going, now we are going to look at the seven stages of a startup. So we are saying, we, we said you should start. So we are now looking at the seven stages. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping because I'm now dealing with the students. Alumni, uh, is there someone who is from alumni who is still here? I can see you. Uh, you can take leave of absence. Yes, my sister. Uh, that one, I don't know who it is. Uh, so you can, you, can, you can take leave of absence so that we can... It's not like the content is like a no under 18 kind of content, but I think we divide it for a specific reason, right? Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay, so we are going on the seven stages of a startup. So a startup is um, a business that is exactly what it means. It's starting up. You are starting up. So when you are starting up, there are generally seven stages that you go, go through. So I'll mention all the seven. Then we'll go into detail on the seven, but more detail on the one. We can't have uh, time to do all the seven. So we do one more, but I'll just summarize. The first one is ideation. From idea, ideation, idea, then shen, right? T I O N, ideation. Uh, the next one is MVP. MVP, meaning minimum viable product. Minimum viable pro product. Uh, the next one is investment. Investment. And for the avoidance of doubts, these are actually given in a very specific order. Uh, they come in the order that I'm giving you. Uh, then the fourth one is product market fit. Product market fit. The fifth is launch or go to market. Launch or go to market. The sixth is growth. The seventh is maturity. Uh, maturity. Okay. So you will find that if you look at those people who do analysis of business, they realize that for a business to survive, it must survive and sustain it for its first five years of existence. For you to test that your business has established itself or consolidated itself, or it has got the resilience, the staying power, the first five years are very critical. So you notice people open a business after four months and they say, I tried and failed. I'm talking about the first what? Five years, not, not two months. That people import hair, right? And the hair is not sold. And already they are saying this business doesn't work. I'm talking of the first five. It's a litmus test. And it's usually because the cycles of business will go five years and then you have a downstream, another five years, going through all those cycles, right? You should also know, uh, as we uh, get to introduction of ideation, that the most constant thing in life is change. That's the only thing, the only thing that doesn't change in life is change. 
Change never changes. And I want you to remember that because things can just change. And we see it every day in our business. That one day an idea that was making money, tomorrow morning it will, seem, it will not make money. One day you are dominant in the market, next day you are replaced. Things change. Right? They say it when you have an opportunity to get date or to date someone, use that opportunity because things what? Change. The market will not always be the same. Tomorrow you'll be replaced. And you what? Tell someone next to you that markets change. They are very dynamic, these markets. They are fluid. That's number one. Number two, markets are not personal. Don't be emotional about markets. They are not personal. They've got nothing to do with you. And when they are changing these markets, they have got nothing against you. So, there are people who know that there's someone who is employed at Zesa to switch off electricity. And then they start praying to God for electricity not to go away. Why are you even praying? You are supposed to organize to put solar, put generator. It's not a prayer item. There are people who are praying about markets, things that God has got nothing to do with. Markets are markets. You don't pray to change people to say, God, why are they not buying chunks? If there is no big markets for chunks, you should then know that opening a vegetarian restaurant might be just a hobby, not a business. Because there is no huge market for vegetarians, even amongst Adventists. I'm not saying people, I'm vegetarian. But I know that the first vegetarian restaurant that was open in town did not last more than three months. It closed. And people who then shout, people are not buying vegetarian. It's got nothing to do with markets. You should understand markets. Now, ideation. Let's sit down on ideation. So, find what startup you should build. Ask yourself what I should be. What is it that I want to build? How do you find it? You find yourself by asking what are problems that people have because a business is a problem solving institution. What is the problem these days? And those are the problems that you want to, to solve. What are the problems? You know, I was saying to myself, people are saying we want clean energy. Right? Clean energy. Then they say we want electric vehicles. Is that correct? Where do you make electric vehicles from? What powers electric vehicles? What? Which? Loud. What powers? Ask your guy next to you to know where there is knowing things that are happening. Say, brother, do you know what is powering? If he doesn't know that, there is no future, my sister. What powers? Lithium, right? Lithium. What else? Different other minerals. Graphite. Bit of nickel can power. Cobalt. All those things can be used to what? But what, where do you get those from? You mine, you destroy the environment to make a clean environment. So there's nothing that is green energy about going to dig and destroying to mine 
so that you make a, a, a mineral that is going to be clean. This is just people who are competing in the world markets, realizing the people with oil are having too much power. Let's move away power from the oil to the power to the countries that don't have oil. What do we do? We spread the message that we need clean energy. What's clean about destroying the environment in the first place? There's nothing clean. Again, these people are identifying a problem and finding a way to solve the problem. Ideation. Identify your possible customers. We are still talking of an idea. No, there, there is, we have got, we are saying there is a fire of paper and a fire of wood. Motoema paper and they would, there is just this opportunity to change money. You know, you change it, you know, you make a profit from the arbitrage. The difference between the prices of currency. You can't base a business on that. It is like a fire of papers. You put it here, you see it burning. After five minutes, the fire is gone. So you should be able to distinguish, is this just an immediate short-term opportunity or this is a long-term sustainable opportunity? Most of the things that we are call calling opportunities, these are just transient things that are coming and going immediately. Right? Create a hypothetical solution to the problem in the form of a product or service. So say, okay, this is the problem. Let's create a hypothetical solution to the what? To the problem. What could be the solution to this problem? Right? Well, what is a possible solution? What could that solution be? Right? Right? What, what, what would we do as a solution to this specific uh, problem? How would I solve this problem? That these young girls don't want to cook sadza anymore. Is there a solution to cooking sadza while you are still at the office? Is this possible to just put it and put it in the pot, put everything, then switch it on from the office by remote while you are in the office? Now you know you can open your gate Someone presses the gate, your phone rings while you are even outside the country, and they will tell you who they are by your gate, then you can open for them your gate in Zimbabwe while you are in Europe. So this person discovered that there was a problem, that someone who might want to be putting out a fire might come to the gate and not get inside when the, high, the, the house is burning. And they developed a solution. Now you can control your irrigation system on your cell phone. And the cell phone will notify you that sprinkler number five on your, on your boom spray, on your pivot, is not working. They need to identify the problem. And if you've got anything in the stores, if you click on it, it will tell you that you ordered it on the 15th. is in the store on shelf number four. Then you phone your employee, go to shelf number four, go and remove sprinkler number nine because it is not sprinkling properly. Are you, are you following? Now, there's a company that people were, were, is using satellite just to analyze data on, on the earth. You can go to them and say, I want to buy a farm, like now. And, they will, and you ask them, what is the potential for this farm? They will give you the history of the farm for the last 10 years. They will tell you the amount of pre precipitation that happened on that farm. The distribution on, of the rain on that farm. Which dates it rained? How many millimeters it rained on each date? Just to ask them, I want to buy farm number five in Zimbabwe on this specific GPS location. They'll give you all that. When you come from there, you come and decide. But these people develop this software while they are seated in their houses. It's a product of the brain. Right? So I spoke to one of these Jewish guys and he says to me, Obe, eh, do you know that if you take a swab and send to us, we can be able to tell you your whole history, where you came from, possible space of origin. Then I said, how do you do that? Do you know? Then he says to me, how do we know as Jews that these black Jews are actually Jews? They are black Jews who were relocated from Ethiopia back to, to Israel. How do we know? 
It's because we did all this and put research and spent more time finding solution for our problem of who is actually a Jew and who is not a Jew. So, the challenge is that we love quick solutions. Problems take time and solutions also take time to develop. Are you following? So, when you are in ideation, you are sitting down to asking yourself, is this a problem? What problem is it? How can it be solved? Are they customers to the solution of this problem? I can see that it is getting heavier. Discuss with the person next, sitting next to you what you have learned so far. If they have not learned anything, just stand up and say, hey, we have a problem here, elder. <laughs> just stand and say you have a problem. Baptism. Okay. Is there any way where there's a problem? Just wave if you are seeing a problem. Okay. So, w when you are still developing a, an idea, don't invest too much money into the idea when you are still at ideation level. Because you might not have a way of taking out the money. You get it? There are people who say, I found a niche in certain shoes. One person buys one pair of shoes and you think many people want it. Then you're going to buy a whole truckload of shoes and they don't get bought. And then you are stuck with the shoes and you start selling everything at a discount. Just be sure before you move ahead whether this is a problem. So usually what you then do, you have to do a research. And sometimes a a research test running a unit of people who accept the solution that you give them. If you go to the history of WhatsApp, the concept of WhatsApp actually started with some guys in South Africa. But they had uh, solutions on the app that were not compliant for clients to use it with ease. Someone just developed it further. Sometimes a, an idea is not something new. It is the tweaking of something that is already existing. So people think having an idea is this grand thing that you think of something that has never been thought of before. No, 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 no. It might just mean doing things differently that have already been done by others. Right? Uh, this text that you've got here. Who did, who did this? Which company did this? Whose company? Whose company? From the alumni I member did this. Right? You see this? You see this? So on this, there's a lot of advertising space. On this, on this strip. So that if you were doing something or wanted to test a concept, you could have actually asked those people in there to, to print part of your concept on this. And that concept is already sold. And it's already within your hands and someone is going with that concept. And you find that it's not rocket. The idea, sometimes when I speak to people, they think, 
when you are talking of idea, we are speaking of this complicated thing. Don't over complicating it by overthinking about it. The things that you might want to do are very simple. I say to people, are there people who are enrolling people for voice of prophecy? Yeah. VOP, are you enrolling? Are you enrolling some people for VOP? Which app are you using for VOP? Which one? Huh? You are using papers. University students. You can't develop an app for VOP. You are using what? Papers. Why? Why are you using papers? Ask the certain certain people, so why are we using papers? Ask them. Who wants papers? Do you even want papers yourselves? Now, when someone receives paper and fills it in, you start praying and say, God has answered prayers. The one who didn't receive, you start saying, people are resisting the word. You are just not moving with the times. Imagine you develop an app. But what is the advantage of having that app? What are the major advantages of having an app of your people? What are the measures? What can you put on it that can make you money on the VOP app so that I can see that you are thinking? What does Facebook sell? Huh? What does it sell? Adverts. No. It doesn't sell adverts. Facebook actually advertises on behalf of people. It doesn't sell adverts. It's the companies like Coca-Cola that has got an advert on what? On Facebook. But why did they choose Facebook? What does Facebook sell to Coca-Cola? Huh? What do they sell to Coca-Cola? Discuss? What does Facebook sell to Coca-Cola? Huh? Light. Clients. From where? Ah. Sells, sells attention. No, it doesn't sell attention. What does Facebook sell? Ah. Yes, exactly. synchronizes in, in, in intelligent information, goes to Coca-Cola, you want to look for this age group of people to advertise, right? Their data sequence is as follows. That's why each time you type a statement on Facebook, if you just say cars on Facebook, it starts popping cars in Zimbabwe for you. While you are there, it pops cars in Zimbabwe. Their business is to analyze you. When you just on go on screen, they will know who you are, what you do. They sell data. So imagine if we put on the back, back, back end of the app, right? That people fill in their details, what they like, where they spend time. And they don't need to also fill in a Bible game that is continually used by people on the VOP app that is online. That we continually change every day. People log in, people log out, and we have their data. Next time we go to Schweppes, you want to advertise on our data sequence, all the youngsters are here. So you can actually give. Do you understand why if you go to Dubai, for instance, uh, internet is for free? It's not for free. The purpose is for them to collect data. The moment you log in for the internet on Dubai airport, it asks your name, where you come from, your age group. The moment you start moving around, they will start sending, popping adverts that link specifically to your age and from where you come from. They're in the business of selling data. And that does not need a lot of capital to do. It needs a lot of ideation and thinking sit down. What, why, why will you not use that VOP platform? to create money for the church. But we don't have it. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? 
But these are things we can form. We can then at university, at ideation level, you have a Delphi method where you all gather at university, you, you form each other into small groups. One from this faculty accounts, and you form one group. In that group, you are just doing a brainstorming group. The ideas might not even make sense. You just have a day where you say, write your idea. The person writes on the board. You start analyzing, criticizing, laughing. The most important things, never, never, never be afraid to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. Right? This is not equivalent to saying it's okay to sin, right? It's not like a, an equivalent. It's okay. You can make lots of mistakes, cancel it out. That's why I'm saying it's easier to do it what you, while you're at university. Because you've got all this time to be able to go to create it, to analyze it, to put it in log form, logical framework, put objective, analyze them, discard it and bring it back. You can spend time on it. You know, these days, if you look at countries like uh, Vietnam, you can actually open your own clothes, clothing line without having a factory to actually make the clothes. They've got these online factories. You design your clothes here. You send it into a production line into a factory. If the batch order quantity is sufficient, for instance, you want to make 1,000, you send it into their production line. You pay it. When you pay, it goes into the line, produce the clothes according to your design and send you them with your own label. You don't even need the cost of buying a machine. So if you know that these clothes are going to cost 1000 or 10000 if you all group together and say, let's contribute 10000 we are going to send this into a production factory in Vietnam, we will receive the clothes and they start turning around. You start crowdfunding for this thing. You know, we crowdfund a lot for things like health, things like this. We crowdfund, right? But we can actually crowdfund for business. Do you know that? Have you seen him? Behold the man. So on ideation, when you want to move away from ideation to the next stage, you should ask the following questions to see if you are ready for the MVP stage. Okay. This is a special announcement. I don't know how to categorize this, but I'll read it as given. All couples and those in serious relationships This is serious, right? Cons uh, let, and there's a caveat to it, so it's okay. Those in serious relationship who are considering marriage within the shortest possible time are needed ASAP in the dining hall upstairs to your ride. They have a lesson with Pastor Randy Skitt. All couples and those considering marriage in the shortest possible time. Can you drag your person and go? There are now arguments here. Do you want us to sing a song for you to stand? You cannot go alone, my sister. You have to go, both of you.
Okay. Are we okay now? Guys, are we okay? Can we continue? I'm not sure what we are talking about now. Is it the same issue? Same issue. So what does it mean about the people who are here? <laughs> I think this, the ones who remained are saying, no, we want to make money for the Lobola. So yeah, I understand you. So, the first question you need to ask yourself is, have I found a community with a problem that has no satisfactory solution? Have I found a community with a problem that has got no satisfactory solution? The team I was discussing with yesterday developed a solution, a mobile money solution. A very brilliant product. In my world, I would say it is actually better than Inbox. Very brilliant. But the problem is they don't have someone to carry it because they must either give it to a bank or to anyone. They must have someone to carry it and they can't find that person. But the problem, the, 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 the solution is good, but do they have a community of people who can use their product? No. But the product is brilliant. That's why they were distraught that we have developed a brilliant product, very good, better than the next product, but there's no one to use it. And that would be your argument. I'm making a healthy food, but people still buy a lot of fat from chicken in. Why? It's all those at ideation to understand, is it a big enough problem for people at a solution that is for because the markets are different. And that's the first question. The second question is, have you validated that enough people would pay to get this problem solved? Did you evaluate that people will pay for this? Because sometimes people will say, ah, this is a good product, but they may not want to pay for it. I saw people doing a test run for Juicy Majanje. You know my Majanje? Our traditional judge. When they were testing you, brilliant, brilliant, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. But when you took it to the shop, no one was buying it. People still bought Mazoe Orange Crush, Raspberry. And you are wondering what happened? This product, people said they want it. When I plunge it, people no longer want it. So you must be able to verify would people pay to get this problem solved. And number three, and equally important, is your solution the correct one for the problem? Because before you know it, someone will come with a better solution to the what? To the problem. And you become irrelevant. I know you don't watch movies, but I want you to go and watch this specific one about how Blackberry became irrelevant. How it was developed then became irrelevant. You know Blackberry? Blackberry, when they saw Steve Jobs trying to develop uh, the, Mac, the iPhone, right? Uh, they say, mm, this guy is wasting his time. Because at a moment, Blackberry was the phone with encryption, they are the ones who came. When you had the Blackberry, you were like the man or the woman. Right? Go and find out how Nokia became irrelevant. Hello, Moto. Go and check how Motorola became irrelevant. It's because they stuck to a solution 
which they thought would solve problems. They, the story of Blackburn is actually interesting in that they made big money suddenly and they existed also suddenly because they refused that the most constant thing about life is change. So all these things are critical. What it means is, it doesn't matter how small your idea is, a research. I've been working in my brain over the road from, uh, from Headlands to Macheke. You know that the stretch for those who have gone to Mutari. What is common on that road? Headlands, between Headlands and Macheke. What is common on the sides of the road? People selling what? Those ones, is there no one has traveled on that road? Are those going out in, in serious, uh, what, what, what does the church amen say? There are a lot of serious. What is common on that road? Yes, Clive. What? No, honey is common between Marondera and Brumley. Right? But between, these are things that you are not even looking when you are driving. Bees chatting. Yes? Tomatoes, exactly. They are always tomatoes. That seems applies to to talk. Why is it that in this day and age, people are still building small tree sheds on the side of a road? This has been happening since independence selling tomatoes. What? Is there no better way from these people who are from graduating from university to deal with the problems of tomatoes on Macheka Road? What do we do? What is the opportunity? What are the chances that people will stop on the road? These people are all chancing. There's no, there's no definite right? Someone might stop and people are competing more. The lines are increasing by the day. There are more people and their produce is good. There will be tomatoes. There will be cucumbers. There is white mbambaira. That mbambaira, that white one is the better of the mbambairas. Sweet potato. They, they've got all these products there. But year after year, you see the same old women who work and toil but still don't make money, they're still on the road. What is the solution to that problem? Discuss with the person sitting next to you. What will be the solution? I want a specific practical business solution. Those online, can you also discuss? Give us your, line, your answers online. If there are people there, you know, you can ask the question online also. Those online. Okay, now I'm giving the answers. I know we are done. Okay, is there someone who says the answer that they've been given here, it's a stroke of genius. Anything that you say, wow, this was a wow answer. What did the, the brother or sister say? Should start caning, clap hands for him. But, but that's very idealistic, right? But it's worth clapping hands for regardless. Okay. Anyone else want another one? Yes? Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so this one is a slave master, but clap hands for him regardless. I want to give you a more practical one where we don't even need to struggle about going to going to, yes? Uh-huh. Just straight to the point. The sister just clapped hands for him. So everyone, can we join the sister who clapped hands? This is the signal, my brother. It's a signal. If you are praying for a signal, you got it. Okay. Ah. Okay. So what is your suggestion? To freeze them. To export them. Clippings for here also. Right at the back in, uh, in CIO glasses. Uh, volume, can you allow him to voluminate? Value addition. Uh, that's a big weight. Makachena, clap hands for him. Yes, the sister there was raising her hand. You wanted to say value addition, like the brother. Clip hands for them, or the two of them. Okay. They are not there in the southern region. Exactly. No, no value addition, no caning, no beneficiation. I won't be remarkable. So three, three problems are on my checker road. Three problems are there. Can we follow now? Three problems. The first problem is scale. The third problem is standard. The third problem is market. Those are the three problems that you guys can sit down and try to find a solution. They, if you decide to export these tomatoes, they are not enough to warrant an export market. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. I sat down with uh, the Zimbabweans who are, who are in Dubai who formed the, the Dubai Business uh, Council, the Dubai Business Council. And they said they sat down with the people in Dubai and they would want at least 10,000 gods per month to be supplied into Dubai, right? There is no one with 10,000 gods at the same time. Right? So there's no one with that scale of gods. So that's the problem one. Number two, if they want 10,000 gods, that means the standard of meat must be con consistent. So why Ivins does an outgrow scheme for chickens is because they standardize. They've got SOP standard operating procedures for everything. So they will come those broilers, Kanonchoa Kudza from Ivins, they'll give you the feed, the vaccines, they'll tell you what to give them at what age. They'll come and take blood samples and test if you have put the sufficient vaccine. They can tell you from the blood samples that the vaccines you have put are not enough. That you have taken some of the feed and directed it somewhere else. They are not having enough feed. That taking this specific nutrient, they're lacking calcium. So they lack standards. Are you getting it? So if we had someone at the scale to do the, the, the gods that I wanted and standardize the quality of the gods that are supposed to be done, then the market is a given solution. Most of the things we're producing don't have a market. Everyone here who produces, who wants to go into agriculture, 
They start by agriculture and then go for the market. So I was speaking to a brother, Mtemeli, in South Africa, who I was, I'm assisting with the farm. And he says in Polokwani, their market for the farmers, you just grow your produce. In the morning, you drive and you leave your products by the market. There are people who are responsible for that. You just telephone them the next day, I'm bringing in tomatoes. And this season, the whole season, I'm bringing five tons per day uh, for the next 30 days. You just go and leave them. Then the next day, when you leave the next, you just collect your cash. Whether the, the product is thrown away or not, the risk is taken at the market, not by you. Are you following? So if you look at it and you say, we would want to find a line product for a solution, because the horticulture money is already there. Because money for horticulture, for exporting, there is no bank which will fail to support you for that. Right? But the problem is, you want to do a small manana uh, horticulture project that is good one hectare. When yet you can aggregate 20,000 people with one hectare farms. That means from the way to go, you don't have a farm, but you actually own 20,000 hectares of what? Of land. Are, are you following what I'm saying? So you find that if at Macheke, someone would go and say, research who, where they are getting the product, who is planning it, standardize it, get the product, and sell it. So this season, I had an experiment to simply say, let me try to identify farmers who can grow maize for me. Right? So there is a drought, but I'm sitting on 3,000 tons of maize. Right? 3,000 tons of maize is what? Is 100 trucks of what? Of maize. But this was just a small experiment. And this experiment, I don't even have to fund it. If you put it in a sequence that is nice, someone else will fund you. If an idea is worth its salt, someone else will pay for the idea. Once you see yourself paying for the idea, it does not make money. Yeah, I know, I know. It's not Money follows a vision. Never the other way around. So once you have got an idea that makes, that's why you people at some stage, when we Facebook, right, can our floater giants, we are now oversubscribed, which means there is more money looking to be paid for the idea than there is space for the idea to accommodate the money. You become oversubscribed if the idea is good. Matimambo bika chikafuchi right, remoisa ma line two, e chikafuchi right, ne chisiri right. Vano e chikafuchi right, you will find that they will struggle to cope with people. Whereas the other line, people will be begging people to eat their food. It's simply like that. Those are the principles of what? Of life and of business. So, that's ideation. Any questions on ideation? Any questions? So we, couldn't, we could only focus on ideation. Any questions? I'm left with five minutes. Any questions on ideation? If there are no questions, let me quickly go to the next stage. Minimum viable product. So finally, you have to test your, uh, uh, your startup. You are ready uh, uh, to launch. So you are saying you develop a product that you would want to solve the solution. This pro product must be developed as cost-effectively as possible. As cost-effectively as possible. In other words, people don't pay because they like you. People pay because they see a value in it. And our perceptions of value are different. We are all value-laden, but our perceptions of value are different. To those people who are not probably Adventists without implications of judging, a short dress will appeal to them than a longer dress. And for their value systems, they'll be saying, I look nicer when it's shorter. And someone who design specifically for people who appreciate what value it is, what it is giving. 
People will say, hey, Coca-Cola in a sugar. I want to go advertise this. Coca-Cola is not good. But the moment you say that, people will drink more Coca-Cola. Right? It's because Coca-Cola will attach itself to people's value systems when they are offering the product. Right? Let's give an example. Imagine hiring a bunch of engineers and spending hours developing an app and showcase different services and automate everything only to realize the people don't like automated solutions. Okay, Zimbabwean men like Saza, but I can promise you, even though the Guatematic became popular, no one is using Guatematic to, to, be, to, to, to cook Saza. They still want their Saza dying by end for some reason. Right? They are now small Guatematics, the ones to make Saza with. But people still prefer those bigger ones. So, when you have done the ideation, you must then ask yourself, can we go to the sale of a minimum viable product? And a minimum viable product is to spend time analyzing what product, how to launch it, and where to launch it, uh, who to launch it. Uh, you must then look for the significant people who can launch a certain product. Uh, I think for today, I'm going to end here. But let me just hasten to say, whatever stages we are giving you, you can, what, once ever you've gone to the second stage, if you realize that there are challenges, you can go back to the first stage. If they are not like cut in, in stones, where if you're at the stage, you can't go back, no. You might realize that at a certain stage, you might want to reverse to the different stage. And what it entails is, Always be look on the lookout, research. There is an opportunity in almost everything. You know, three weeks back, we, 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 ran, we had a shortage of water. We had a shortage of water. The, the whole shops ran out of water. And we are here. You know, the, great, the biggest supplier of water is a Chinese guy with a company called ZLG. You know what ZLG means? Zimbabwe life is good. So this Chinese came and said, ha, I'm supplying water in a country where people were there not supplying their own water. ZLG, Zim life is good. Uh, thank you very much. Zim life is good. much. Thank you so much uh, Elder Chimuka for the powerful lesson. How many of us were blessed? There's someone who wrote that. Let the young man in his desperation go out to hunt. If he dies, his poverty will end. If he catches the, the prey, his poverty will, will end. The problem that we have as young people is we don't want to try. Let's challenge frequently our normal existence. So may God bless you. So at this moment in time, uh, we just have a, a, a music session for two minutes while well, we transition to the lesson uh, with Pastor Nari. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>